Hey, all you creative types out there, it is the Municipal Man of Mystery back for another edition in our series on how to create beats for your beat buddy using MIDI, etc. We are at number 11. We have covered a lot of ground. That's great. I hope everyone is sticking with the plan and you keep practicing and working on your MIDI skills and you are getting to the point where you can create your own beats for your original songs or cover songs you want to play or performances you want to do and all of that great stuff. We're going to move on with a little more of an advanced skill. We're going to look at how to add sounds to an existing drum kit. There's a lot of theory and I don't want to complicate things so I'm just going to stick to the nuts and bolts of this because as we walk through it you'll latch onto the concepts and that will probably serve you better than drowning you in theory. So let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the Beat Buddy Manager. I'm just going to pull this into the window here. We've got a project open that we've been working on. We made our song Thor. I'm just going to add a new song to this project here and we're going to use this just for our testing purposes today. I'm just going to call this uh, Drum Sounds for fun. I'm going to use the Rock Kit for this uh, for no particular reason except that, um, uh, I don't know, it sounds like a good idea. So what we want to do first is see the drum kit itself. Go up here, go to drum sets, hit open drum set. Now before we do that, I'm going to uh, bring a finder window in here and, and just walk you through something. If I'm in my Beat Buddy Manager folders over here, and I've got my two libraries. I made this library just for our tutorial purposes, but I do have my regular library where I keep all my songs, all my wave sounds, all my drum kits, etc. Now, if you go to drum sets, these are all of the um, Beat Buddy drum sets that I have downloaded from Singular Sound that I use, and there's quite a range of them. If you open up one of these and manipulate it, it is permanently manipulated unless you change it. So if you don't want to do that and you want to leave them as they are, you have a choice. You can duplicate the drum set, rename it as something new, bring that into the Beat Buddy Manager, and then just change those instruments on that drum set. And then you just have a new drum set and you can call it something else that you can find. If you just want to add a sound for one particular project, meaning it's just for that one occasion, then you can actually go to the project drum sets. And if I go into projects, here's our project with our um, that we've been working on. And you'll notice within the project, it has a folder called drum sets and it has renamed the drum sets that you have imported into the project as something new. From the numbers, you can't tell which one, but if you open this CSV file here, it will tell you. You can see there's a, the number and it tells you which kit that is. So we're going to manipulate the rock kit just in this project. I don't want to manipulate my permanent rock kit. I'm just going to leave that as original. Let's open that drum set. So if I go here and I hit open drum set, this is my rock kit with the new number and I'll hit that and it opens it up for me. So let's take a look at what we've got here. At the top we see our drum set rock 1.1 and it has this percentage number. A drum set in Beat Buddy Manager can only be 100 megabytes so it's telling you how much of that 100 megabytes you're, you have used and how much room you have to add drum parts because there are limits to that. So we're at 91%, so that, that's a lot. We, we can add a lot to this drum kit. It's not a very big one. If you look at something like the standard Pro, that's at about 98%, which gives you a little bit of breathing space, but it's a much larger drum kit. All right, and then as we uh, look down, we can see all of the instruments in this drum set, and they're laid out in a grid. The first thing to notice is that it has the name of the instrument here, metronome, and that could be snare, kick, tom, whatever, and a number. And the number is what we are concerned with. And if I click on that identifier, it opens the details window and it gives us the same information. There's uh, some other information in the middle here, which we're not going to get into today. Our metronome is occupying MIDI ID number 33, and it is called metronome. That's what we're concerned with. And as we go down, we notice that every every instrument in this drum set has a MIDI ID number. So what we want to do is find an empty space, a number that is not being used on the MIDI map. Let's go down to the bottom and see which one is available. We don't want to fill in all the instruments sequentially. 
Uh, you, it's good to leave gaps in between the numbers because you may want to add an instrument. And if you've pushed two together in sequential order, there's no room there to add something new. And you may want to keep uh, certain instruments grouped together. So for the sake of logic and organization, the numbers are not always sequential. If I go here, I see the last number I have is my splash symbol at number 59. So let's say number 61. We'll leave a little space. Let's go back to drum sets add instrument and there it is so now we want to open up the details window and add the identifying inf information let's add a bongo just because bongos are fun and it could be anything could be a tambourine another cymbal uh, a different kick whatever you want to add it can be a cat squealing it, it don't make cat squeal by the way that's cruel but uh, you get the point any sampled sound can be an instrument in a drum kit. And then we want to choose our identifier, which we determined was going to be number 61. We're gonna skip this information right now because it's not relevant to what we're doing and we'll leave it at that. So now you'll notice um, a little more information in the table. We have zero to 127. This is the velocity range at which the MIDI note will activate the sample. So you will notice that on more complex uh, drum parts, each sample covers a range of the velocity scale, which means if you set the velocity of your MIDI note within that range, it will play this sample. If you want to hear the samples, you can play them in the Beat Buddy Manager. Okay, you'll notice that's pretty quiet, but if I go to the highest range, I've got a much more pronounced kick, which has a higher gain, which will produce a higher volume. For our purposes, we're just going to add one bongo just for the sake of simplicity. So what we want to do is find a wave sample of a bongo sound that we like and put it in here. And we're going to use the browser feature that is offered us by the Beat Bunny Manager. And... I'm going to go back to my projects uh, because I have a folder called Wave Sources, and uh, these are wave samples that either I've made or collected. We're looking for a bongo. I've got a bunch of um, wave samples that I've collected from different drum sets. Let's choose this um, bongo sound here, and you'll notice it is a wave, uh, which just means it's an analog uh, recording. You can't use an mp3 or something like that. It has to be a wave. Okay, and if you want to hear it, you can just play it in the finder there. And that's the one we're going to choose. So we're going to hit open. And if I go over here, here's our wave that we just opened. And if I want to test it, there it is. And we're going to save the drum set up here. And then it reorganizes them into the proper numbers. I want you to have this video for free. But if you've got two or three bucks lying around, and you can kick them over here, it helps me take time from my real job and do more of this. So find the link below, go to PayPal, select only the least of what you can afford, and just know that I'd really appreciate it. Now what we want to do is program the MIDI beat to accommodate the bongo parts that we want, and we're going to put it in the uh, main loop here to populate the Beat Buddy Manager song file. So. We have to go to our sequencer, and as you know, I'm using Logic. I'm going to open a new project just for the purposes of making the beat. Make a new track, software instrument. Choose a, a drum kit. Any drum kit will do. I'm going to generate a couple of notes uh, that we can manipulate. Let's go down to the editor and... Um, get this beat in proper order. Okay, we're not going to do anything special with this beat. We're just going to make something simple out of it. Now what we want to do is add our bongo sound, and we know our bongo is at number 61 on the MIDI map, and over here, this is what we're using as our uh, scale. Now, unfortunately, I haven't seen a software that actually tells you which MIDI note this is, um, but they are here. But there is a way to find out. I just went on to Google and found this here, and uh, this is helpful enough to get us going. 
So uh, what we're looking at here is we have C1 on the piano keyboard, and that is number 36. And that's pretty standard. Most drum sets, you will notice uh, C1 is a bass drum. Okay, and this drum kit is no different. C1 is our kick. So here's C1, uh, 61 on the piano scale, and it's showing it as C sharp, uh, but it's C3 sharp. So this is C3 here, which means C3 sharp is our note that we're looking for, and uh, ironically for us, that is actually a bongo, and that just happened to work out. Although it's not important if it is or isn't. So let's go back to Logic, and we're going to place a note at C3 sharp. I don't know if that's right. C3 sharp, C, C sharp 3. Okay, so there's C3, there's C sharp, and We've put a note there. So we're gonna export our MIDI file. We'll go down to export, select, uh, export selection as MIDI file. Okay, so now we're gonna save that in our project file. Under songs, uh, I just called it drum trials. Uh, drum trials main is the name of this beat. And I'm gonna save it there. Let's go back to Beat Buddy Manager and bring it in and see if it's worked out as we had planned. So drum trials main open. There it is. I'm going to save it. Uh, I've got the right drum kit selected, Rock 1.1. Let's test it. Great, it worked. There's our bongo on that syncopated uh, note. Well, let's leave that for today. Uh, that was the simplistic nuts and bolts uh, method of adding a drum sound to a drum set. Certainly not comprehensive, but it'll get you started, and if you fiddle around with this enough, I'm sure you guys are smart enough to get it because, hey, we're all geniuses, right? So, we're going to be using these skills in later tutorials. Stick with us, and stay tuned. Stay tuned.